Okay. Now, let's begin to make this very specific by talking about running time for four specific problems. And this is, um, these are just motivating problems. I want, I want to make things more concrete. So my input is going to be a set of n distinct positive numbers. Now, what does this mean? You might be given a file with n lines in it, and on each line, there is a positive number. You have to read this data line by line by line by line. We'll count one each time you read a number. So what is the largest integer in S? How would you or how, how could you solve this problem? Here's a, a very naive algorithm. Read the first line in the file. You've got a positive integer. And it's the bird in the hand trick. The one I just read is the biggest one I've seen thus far. Hold it. Now, read the second number and compare it with the first one. It's either, uh, they're different. So it's either bigger or smaller. If it's smaller, just do nothing. Drop down to the next line. If it's bigger, throw this one away and grab this one as your bird in the hand. Birds, pigeons, you got it. Okay, so the bird in the hand is the, is the, that's my joke for today. So you've got this bird in your hand. That's the biggest one you've seen thus far. You haven't seen much, just the first two lines of the file. But, but now you just keep going. Each time you read a new line, you read the number, you compare it with the one that you have in your hand at this moment. If it's smaller, ignore it. If it's bigger, you replace this value with this one. And at the end of reading all the numbers in the file, you report the number you have in your hand. How much work did you have to do? You had to read each number, and you had to make a comparison. So if there are n lines in the file, roughly speaking, you had to make two n steps. Two at each for each n. A read and a compare. And inside a computer, those two operations take about the same length of time. Reading and comparing is done quickly, but, but they do take some time. So two in steps. All right, next problem. If A is the first integer in S, are there distinct numbers B and C so that A equals B plus C? So you, you read the first number. It's on the top line. That's A. Now you start reading below, and you're looking for B and C that add to give A. Hmm. I'm going to say back to you what I heard you say, which might not be quite what you said, but let's see if it is. I've got A. Now, I'm going to read the second number. What happens if the second number is bigger than A? I'm going to ignore it and just drop down to the third number. What happens if the third number is also bigger than A? You didn't quite say this, but it's okay. 
I'm going to I'm going to read down until I get to a number that's less than a. Now I got a candidate for b. Now I'm going to take a, the first number, minus b. Now I'm that's the c I'm looking for. So now the c might be up above me. So I look, I start scanning to see if the c is in there. It's the A minus B. I, I have to go all the way down to the bottom of the file. Now, if I find it, I halt, and, I, and the answer is yes. If I don't find it, what do I do next? Take this position and drop it down one, and repeat again. Drop it down, and drop it down, drop it down, drop it down. But each time I drop this one down, I have to start over again and scan the whole file with the other number. What, what was that word? Sort. 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 Is that like out of sorts? Uh, I'm, I'm messing with you. Wait, I, hang on just for a few minutes and we'll talk about sorting. Okay, so I, I guess we get an idea that there are some, some algorithms around for, for doing this. They're not particularly complicated. All right, uh, problem number three. Are there three distinct integers in the set a, B, and C. Now, now, I don't care where they come from in the set, so that A equals B plus C. And my last problem is the fair division problem. If you remember the fair division problem we discussed in lecture one, given a whole bunch of integers, can you break them up into two parts? I don't care how many numbers are in each part, but I want the sum of these to be equal to the sum of these. OK, so now let's make these things more concrete with actual examples. And we did the first one. Finding the largest integer in S can be done in n steps, where n equals cardinality is a problem size, where a step has two operations in it, a read and a comparison. That's a step. So n steps, two n operations, n steps. The second one. If A is the first number in, in S, determining whether there are numbers B and C in S so that A equals B plus C can, can be done in N minus 1 choose 2 steps. Because there's only N minus 1 other numbers, pick them up two at a time. That's a, that's a loop. 4I equals 2 to N. For j equal, uh, 2 to n minus 1, for j equals i plus 1 to n, is a equal to the ith number plus the jth number? Yes or no? If, if yes, halt. If no, keep going. That's a loop. And that loop will have n minus 1 choose 2 steps in it. Each step involves reads and a comparison. Example, determining whether or not there are numbers a, b, and c, so that a equals b plus c, that can be done in n choose three steps. What does each step consist of? Picking up three distinct numbers in the set and seeing whether or not they result in the a equals b plus c. So how, what's a step consist of now? You pick up the three numbers. Well, which one is A, which one is B, which one is C? There's some variation in there. But you, could, you can quickly do this. So you can certainly do it in N choose three steps. Notice the difference. N, N squared, N cubed. Doesn't seem to be possible to do the second one in a linear number of steps, it doesn't seem to be able to do the third one in a quadratic number of steps. And the fair division problem now is, is even harder. 
Determining whether the fear division problem can be solved for S can be done in n times 2 to the n steps. Okay, what, what does a step consist of? You take your set and you divide it up into a subset t and then s minus t. Put some of the numbers here, put some of the numbers over here. How many times do you have to do that? Well, you have to do that essentially for every subset. Well, you could argue only look at the non-empty subsets, but 2 to the n steps altogether. And for each step, now you have to do some work. You have to do, it seems like a more work, because you have to add up all these numbers, and you have to add up all these numbers, and then compare them. So each of the steps has a, has a complicating factor in it that we didn't really see in the other problems. And that's why I multiplied by the n, because you have to do these additions and a comparison. And if you've got n numbers all together, that requires like n steps. N operations within each step. Okay, so I can certainly do this with a running time which behaves like n times 2 to the n. So think about it. n, n squared, n is big O of n squared, but actually n is little o of n squared. n squared is little o of n cubed, and n cubed is little o of n times 2 to the n. So these four problems seem to be sequentially going from the easier one and, and, and progressing to more difficult, more difficult, and then this one is the, is the most difficult among these four. But as, as, as should be suggested by that catalog of increasing functions, there's all kinds of things in between. 